I'm the moderator. I, we have an excellent uh, panelist uh, today, Dr. Chung Yun Chu, Dr. Sarah Goer, and Dr. Yun Jin Jong, and Dr. Hu Yun Ko. So uh, I would like to introduce the first speaker. The case presenter is uh, Dr. Anna Catalina Enyunga from Philippines. The Keeping the technique as laid out in the letter of the CTO-PCR in Philippine Health Center. Dr. Anna, please. Good day, our esteemed panelists and dear guests. I am Anna Katrina Enchua from the Philippine Heart Center, together with my mentor, Dr. Ronaldo H. Estacio, and my colleague, Dr. Jasper Valian Pablo, who did, did this service case. Let me walk you through in our um, service case entitled Tip-In Technique as Bailout in Retrograde CTO-PCI. So we are presented with a 61-year-old male who is a known hypertensive diabetic who, are, who is non-compliant to medications, post-stroke, a 50-pack year smoker, and a previous heavy alcoholic beverage drinker, who came in with a chief complaint of chest pain eight hours prior to admission, accompanied by shortness of breath and diaphoresis. He was diagnosed with ACS temi of the inferior wall, suffered from ventricular tachycardia, hence Synchronized cardioversion and, and ACLS was done, and he was advised transfer to a PCI-capable institution. At the emergency room, physical examination showed that patient is in cardiogenic shock with the following findings. 12 with ECG showed ST elevation at the inferior leads, as well as the right-sided and posterior leads. Working diagnosis during this time are as follows. Hence, cath lab was activated and patient was wheeled into the CV lab. So this coronary angiogram was done via right transfemoral arterial approach using a six French Judkins catheter. We can see here that LCX is a good size non-dominant vessel with the 20 to 30% osteoproximal segment stenosis followed by a tight 95 to 99% mid to distal segment stenosis. We can also see here that the left main has a 50% distal segment stenosis and LAD has a 95% osteoproximal segment stenosis. In the other views, confirming our um, findings, we have a LAD that is a good size vessel with a 95% osteoproximal segment stenosis becoming totally occluded just before the diagonal one. We can also notice that there are calcified segments on the uh, CTO. This view showed us that the left main has a 50% distal segment stenosis. And this is the RCA, which is a good size dominant vessel with a 70% aorto-osteal segment stenosis accompanied by ventricularization of pressure upon cannulation. It is followed by a tight 95 to 99% proximal segment stenosis accompanied by intraluminal filling defect. We can also see that there is a collateral coming from the right supplying the CTO on the LAD. So the team decided to do balloon angioplasty and thrombus aspiration on the index procedure with the following um, materials. And we obtained a TIMI-3 flow post-procedure. With the findings of increased LVEDP of 40 millimeters mercury and a 3VD with left main involvement and cardiogenic shock, we decided to put in an IABP. So the plan for the patient initially is for urgent cabbage due to high syntax score. He was transferred then to the coronary care unit. But upon discussion by the heart team approach, they calculated a high uh, surgical mortality and also the patient doesn't have a consent for cabbage. Hence, he was brought back to the CV lab for a multivessel complex CTO-PCI. So at the CAT lab, we did dual injection using, those, uh, micro, uh, using the guide catheters to further visualize the CTO characteristics. In our patient, we have a tapered proximal cap, a more than 20 millimeter length of the CTO associated with calcifications, which gives us a JCTO score of two. 
So the team decided to go anti-gridly initially with the Fielder XTA and, up and escalated to a Gaia third, but went sub-intimal space several times and consuming several um, hours. Hence, we decided to go retrogradely. But before uh, retrograde P uh, CTO PCI, we fixed first the disease proximal segment of the donor vessel, which is the RCA. We predilated the lesion with a 2O by 20 millimeter semi compliant balloon for adequate lesion preparation and position and deployed a 3O by 32 millimeter DES on the aorto ostial segment up to the proximal segment of the RCA. Then we proceeded with septal surfing using the, micro, using the following microcatheter and um, guide wire successfully and positioned the Asahi Shon on the second septal perforator. We attempted to do kissing wire technique, but again went into subintimal space several times as confirmed by a donor vessel injection here. After several attempts, we did a uh, retrograde true lumen puncture using a Conquest Pro. Um, and then we tried to, at this point, we tried to advance the microcatheter as close as possible on the distal cap of the CTO, but there was a resistance and problem in advancing the microcatheter despite many maneuvers done. Hence, we did the bailout in this patient, which is called the tip-in technique. You can see here, this is the retrograde guide wire. We inserted it over the anti-grade guide catheter and also the anti-grade guide, uh, the anti-grade microcatheter, which was parked inside the anti-grade um, guide catheter. On your right, you can see that uh, when it when it was also already inserted, we advanced the microcatheter traversing the CTO LAD, and then we did a wire exchange with the workhorse wire here. To facilitate wiring of the um, LAD to mid to distal segment, we exchanged the microcatheter with the double lumen microcatheter, and then we we did um, IVUS uh, IVUS run, and then the PCI goes anti-gridly. We first um, we first did the PCI of the LAD, and next with the LCX and the left main. This is the final shot with IVUS guidance, and we finally go out to the CV lab with a stable patient and a TIMI 3 flow um, procedure. So what is tip-in technique? Um, according to Min Envo um, et al., tip-in technique is done when an anti-grade microcatheter is advanced over the retrograde guide wire in the anti-grade guide, allowing easy, predictable, and successful anti-grade wiring by inserting a wire into the anti-grade microcatheter. It allows successful revascularization of a CTO after failure to externalize. Some of its advantages is that there's no need for long externalization wire. The difficulties in microcatheter crossing over the collaterals are eliminated. There is a decreased risk of vessel injury because there's no need for excessive rotation and pushing of the microcatheter. And also there is a decreased risk of donor vessel ischemia because there will be uh, no prolonged retrograde position of the microcatheters. And also there will be no more meticulously ACT controlling because the procedure will go anti-gridly instead of retrograde. And also the complications could be decreased um, when using uh, when, when when we're not using externalization of wire so again for the summary we have a 61 year old uh, male who suffered from acs temi of the inferior wall had a coronary angiogram which revealed cad3 vessel disease with left main involvement in cardiogenic shock and underwent a um, complex CTO PCI. So first, we approached the patient using an uh, anti-grade wire escalation, but several um, hours passed and also um, several attempts was uh, done, but cannot go in successfully anti-gridly. Hence, we proceeded with the retrograde, um, retrograde CTO. And a kissing wire technique was um, attempted several times, but again failed. But when the retrograde true lumen puncture was done, there was a um, difficulty in advancing the microcatheter for the externalization. Hence, tip-in technique was done and, and um, PCI um, goes anti-gridly. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po.
Thank you very much for the excellent case. The comment? Oh, uh, one comment I'd like to make. You had a very sick patient, inferior RV infarct, cardiogenic shock. Could you have considered just doing the RCA and then doing after 15 days or later in a second stage, the complex PCA, you took several hours, so much die, such a sick patient. Maybe you could have staged it, just do RCA, because RCA is a huge vessel giving a donor huge collaterals to LID. Yes, Doc. Actually, the index procedure, when we did the um, um, balloon angioplasty and thrombus aspiration, and also when we inserted IABP, the patient improved. And then um, after several days, I think about three to four days in the coronary care unit with uh, inotropic support, the BP stabilized. That's why the team decided to... Um, go for the complete revascularization. But again, um, your point is also well noted, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one small question. Since your Michael Kester cannot advance to LAD, and which kind of wire did you pass the CTO body? The retrograde wire that was used was um, Conquest Pro 12. With but you, you passed the Conquest Pro wire via the septal channel back to LAD? Because your mangle cases do not anti LAD. So uh, after um, several attempts, we we did a retrograde true lumen puncture, and then we um, inserted the retrograde guide wire over the anterograde guide catheter. But the next problem is the advancement of the microcatheter, which was very hard because there is resistance. We tried. Um, increasing the guide support of the retrograde um, guide catheter by... In, um, yeah, I know, but yes. I mean that if your myocaster cannot enter LAD, which kind of wire did you pass from the septal to LAD? You mean seal. But your myocaster do not go up to LAD, right? Um, several attempts, we did, um, we did uh, true, um, true lumen puncture until up to the LAD. Yeah, but it's by Congress Pro 12, right? Yes. But at that time, did you, did you Michael Gaster pass to LED or not? The microcatheter, Doc. Pa uh, get into the LED or not? The, the retrograde microcatheter did not. So Cannot. you used Congress Pro 12 to go to the septal branch? The septal branch. Congress Pro 12? Yes, Doc. And then <laughs> yeah, we... Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, but some, some difficulty or the, some uh, risk for yeah. okay. uh, passing the conquest of pro to the septal channel. Yeah, I see. But yeah, the, I see. The, it's very in dangerous. this case, very. Um, mm, but, uh, mm, but in this case, there's no way. <laughs> Don't change the microcast another one or the anchor baron technique to pass the uh, microcast up to the septal. We sometimes use a uh, uh, backup. Well, in this case, uh, you use a JR Jatkins catheter. Yes. So the, it's a very support. backup is very weak. So it's a no way. So any you can try okay. Corsair yeah. Pro yeah. or Corsair Pro XS, yeah. or use the caster yeah. to facilitate the uh, advance of a retrograde microcaster. Yeah. Okay, please. Hey, I'm Dr. Chawla from India. Yeah. Very well present, very well done case. Mm. Thank you, sir. Uh, Going with Conquest Pro Septal to LED mm. and then going to integrate catheter is a very dangerous procedure. Mm -hmm. We should not go with one successful case mm. that this can be done. Mm. This should not be done. <laughs> this is yes. what my concept is. <laughs> well okay. noted, sir. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Anyway, try to the, uh, advance the micro catheter uh, up to the LED is the best choice, mm. I think. Yeah. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to invite the next speaker, the, uh, Dr. Lidmira Ulyanova from the uh, Russia. Okay, okay. Let to grade recanalization of clot occlusion of the right coronary artery. So, please. Good afternoon, dear yeah. colleagues. Um, Thank you for the opportunity. Today I'm going to share with you our clinical case of the retrograde recanalization of chronic occlusion of the right coronary artery. I have no disclosure to make. And the patient, 67 years old man, he has he had uh, complaints of the of angina pectorals 
at the level of the second functional class, and uh, he had positive stress test. On June uh, 27th, uh, 2022, uh, we performed uh, the coronary angiography and found out that the patient had uh, the balanced tip of blood supply. The left uh, anterior uh, descending artery had 18% uh, stenosis in the middle segment. The uh, circumflex artery had irregular contours and right coronary artery uh, was occlused in, at the ostium. Uh, Post-occlusive section were well contrasted through the intersystem and intersystem collaterals. First step, uh, we performed a PCA LID uh, during which uh, a 3.5 on 26 millimeter death was implanted in the middle segment uh, LAD. After, uh, after that, the patient uh, was um, uh, going to the first, uh, second step uh, to recanalization uh, RCA. Unfortunately, uh, our multiple attempts uh, to perform and integrated canalization were unsuccessful. Then uh, we decided uh, uh, to switch uh, retrograde access. Uh, so we, ins uh, uh, we used extra backup 3.5 uh, so, uh, through the femoral right uh, access. A soft guide wire was inserted in the distal, L uh, distal LAD. And uh, we used uh, microcatheter uh, Corsair to lead a guide wire in the distal uh, uh, right coronary artery. A retrograde uh, micro, uh, microcatheter uh, was, in, uh, was uh, incited uh, through re uh, retrograde guide wire. After that, we performed uh, retrograde recanalization uh, um, right coronary artery uh, used a uh, guide wire uh, Gaia third. Due to uh, uh, ostium lesion uh, of RCA, uh, it was uh, in, uh, uh, we, uh, we uh, could not uh, insert uh, uh, integrate guide, uh, guide catheter to lead uh, retrograde uh, guide wire in train. Uh, therefore, we decided uh, to trap uh, guide wire in the bracket phallic trunk. Then uh, we <coughs> insert integrate uh, microcatheter uh, through the uh, retrograde guide wire. After that, we uh, delete retrograde system. A soft guide wire was uh, inserted uh, through uh, the integrate microcatheter to the distal LAD. After that, we uh, made a sequential puncture of the effect uh, section um, right coronary artery, used a balloon catheter 3.0 on 20, 20 millimeters. Uh, after, uh, after the um, attention, uh, uh, 8 to 12 atmospheres. The control uh, angiograms uh, visualize the dissection in the middle segment of the RCA. We implanted uh, a 3.5 uh, on 20, uh, 38 millimeter death in the middle seg segment to prevent um, for, uh, for us uh, group uh, the dissection. After that, we implanted uh, a uh, 2.75 on 20 millimeters death in the distal segment and uh, 3.5 on 33 millimeter death in the proximal segment in the RCA. Uh, a, con uh, a control OCT study, uh, RCA, visualized uh, that the uh, stent uh, were optimal implant. And here we can see um, uh, the 
stain grow the section in the middle segment, but uh, there is no uh, long dissection at the proximal or distal edge stands. Uh, on the, uh, the finally, angiograms uh, show it uh, that the optimal stent result. If uh, the patient uh, has good inter-system uh, collaterals, he has a chance of successful retrograde recanalization. The uh, implementation of intervascular research methods always to achieve the optimal result of stenting. And a recognition of CTO is one of the most complex interventional on the coronary arteries. When starts uh, a procedure, the operator must have several action plans. Knowledge and uh, uh, experience is available of tools as a key to a successful recognition result. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. Any other any comment? You do the uh, snail technique to, for ritual gray wire, right? Yes. And then do the externalization? Uh, yes. Um, okay. We uh, could not um, check. Yeah. Um, uh, if, did you ever try dodecaster in the right coronary plasma portion? Dodecaster in the plasma mm -hmm. portion of right coronary artery. Uh, do, uh, uh, dodecaster. Uh, Five French uh, caster. Uh, 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 What's on the child technique? Yeah. 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 You, if you use a uh, uh, child catheter, you can you may catch the retrograde wire into the guide, yeah. not using the snare technique. Yes, yes, yes. It means. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I find your, your result use, uh, using uh, OCT is uh, very beautiful, but I, for CTO intervention, I, we also recommend to use IVAS first because in initial phase, you don't worry about the uh, uh, flow related dissection. And then maybe uh, for your case, it's very lucky to go the red wire crossing to the CTO retrograde. But most of the case was uh, retrograde uh, was recognized using a reverse car. So you maybe need an anti anti-grade preparation. Even you can use the iris state layer to see if the retro wire is called subtima or intrapregally. That would be make your uh, uh, your case more perfect. It's my Thanks. suggestion. So what OCT it's done after stenting? Yes. Yeah. Not, not before stenting? Yeah. You use OCT? Uh, OCT after stenting. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, oh. It, it's done yeah. after yeah. stenting, so it's not okay. worrying about the uh, okay, okay. accession uh, elongation. Okay. Propagation, no, no, not. So in this case, uh, the, how, how, how long in this, how long this region? Um, ab about uh, one hour. No, 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 no. Region length, 20, 20 or more. CTO region length, Less length region, of the city. <laughs> how long the region length, the CTO? Uh, uh, how long? Yeah. Um, 20? Uh, may maybe, I don't remember. Oh. But I guess uh, it's yeah. short, not maybe. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So I would like to invite the third speaker, Dr. Raman Chor, uh, from um, the India. A case of a complex city, oh, please. Thanks for many. Yeah. Thanks for the kind of invitation. Uh, my bring greeting from India. Mm. My case is about 80 year male, not hypertensive, not adaptic, but had history of angina in the last two years. Now he has come to us with crescent of angina. Routine machine is essentially normal with EF of 45%, and he was dynamically stable. Plan was to do angiography. Angiography revealed that he had uh, left main, some plucking, uh, LED was normal, and there is a subtotal occlusion of circumflex, significantly large circumflex, LED was normal. His RCA shows diffuse disease, distal part being CTO, and heavy cal heavily calcified vessel. I thought of doing intervention with a stage procedure. I thought we'll do the difficult case first. I thought of starting with the RCA. And we used right femoral catheter, and JR catheter was used from right femoral root. This was JR catheter. In all CTOs, my previous plan is just to use the routine wire and see how, how do the lesion feel like. If I feel lesion can be crossed, they don't go to the CTO wires. This is what happened. This is another view of CTO. 
diffuse, heavily calcified, circumferential calcification. I start with simple Sion blue wire and actually it crossed. So I started wanting to do pre-dilatation with balloon, but balloon could not be crossed. I started using guide liner, but with no success. This is guide liner, wire across it, and bike could not pre-dilate the region. Now I wanted to have another support, so I used guide liner, wire, and buddy wire along with guide liner. This is what was buddy wire along with guide liner. I still cannot cross. Then I used anchor balloon in the buddy wire. I still could not cross. So I've already crossed, taken two or three support, but my balloon could not cross. So what other option I had? There are so many options available, but at that time I started, I thought to wanted to change the guiding catheter to amplasser on already cross speed say wire. So I took additional 035 length thermo exchange wire. I put the wire in aortic root and trying to withdraw the JR catheter over these two wires. And then you can see my catheters. I started taking amplasar guide catheter on these two wires. You can see my guide catheter going up. This guide catheter being engaged. So finally my amplasar catheter was engaged on the cross Peterse wire non-exchange length. So after engagement AL1, even then I could not cross with balloon. So this is, I could, my lesion could not be crossed. So starting using the guide liner again with amplasar catheter in situ. So did multiple dilatation. Finally, I was able to cross the lesion with multiple dilatation, small balloons. And then to put stent distally, I put the guide liner deep into the right coronary artery slided this guide liner on the inflated balloon distally. So my guide liner was across significant lesions. Now I did distal to proximal stenting. And you can see once you have a guide liner, there's sometimes hinge point of the guide liner when the wire goes in. The stent is actually held up there. Just wanted to see the stent is not being held up there. So multiple dilatations and the long stent was finally put in. And then I found that it was a proximal dissection, which was probably unrelated to amplasar guide, because this level dissection was distilled to the amplasar ostium, could be amplasar guide also, but that site was clean. So put another stent, dilatation. So finally we had good TME flow and wanted to push it for stage procedure in the next sitting. So main reason for failure in CTO interventions are inability to cross with balloon wires and stents multiple techniques are available for difficult crossing like guide liner, buddy wire, anchor balloon and lastly exchange the guide wire on PTSA wire. We should learn from the mistakes. In the beginning itself I have a finding is difficult case I started with amplasar. You could have used long sheets or extended PTSA wire if I wanted to exchange the guide catheter or could have used over the wire balloon and I could have used micro catheter across the lesion, take another wire, you know, hard wire across the lesion over the micro catheter. And the problem was of rota was not available with me. So never give up. But we must know our limitations also because patient safety is the most important aspect. It is good to learn from others' mistakes. This is what I committed mistakes, so you should not do it. Thanks for your patience hearing. Thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. Question or comment? So it's an excellent uh, demonstration, a very complex calcified CTO. Just a few suggestions, thoughts that one is sometimes if you have a Nick Nano balloon that can cross really the tightest spots even then other balloons are not crossing. Right. Second thing, if you have a Tornus, you can micro catheter which uh, can go in a screwing movement, mm. create a space and uh, enter uh, across very, very tight calcified lesions. These are two technologies you can use when no balloon is crossing. You have one thing you did was you were able to exchange the guiding with a double end wire, which is, I mean, quite uh, amazing because that's quite difficult to do. Thank you. Putting it, uh, you know, uh, taking out the original guide and putting another one. But Nick Nano or a Tornus, that can be. Yeah, other points are well checkered. Those, those balloon could have been crossed. Yes. I think uh, I should have tried just simple micro 
cross yes. collision and exchange the wire yeah, to harder right. wire. Another right. option, as you have told me. That's thank you for the suggestions. Any comment or question? Uh, how about using rotoblator in this case? Yeah, yeah obviously uh, using rotoblator first. I have to cross the uh, legion with the rotor wire. Rotor wire yeah. So to exchange the routine wire with the rotor wire, use microcatheter. Once I have said I have used microcatheter across the lesion, if it goes, I have not tried in this patient, then I could have used harder wire or rotor ablation wire. So obviously rotor availability is required in a patient who is where I am trying calcified lesions. Yes, how about how about treat the right to uh, plasma to meet the portion of the right coronary artery and advance the microcatheter uh, as far as possible? Because we know that the <coughs> deeper the far, the far, the, the, the furthermore, microcast, uh, uh, inside the coronary artery, the better support it is. True. So, right. if you do dilate the plasma to middle part and advance the daughter to the middle part, you may not need to change the guiding caster. True. Mm -hmm. But uh, my balloon was held at proximal part. Mm -hmm. It was not held at distal part. Your point is very well taken. You can dilate proximal part and go distally. But balloon was being held at the proximal point itself, not at the distal most site in this case. So, uh, uh, which balloon, uh, 1.0? It or? is uh, one, one millimeter balloon. Mm. Okay. Okay. This was basically, okay. case was, this was mm. held at the proximal region point, not at the distal. That's it. Okay. okay. My comment, even though they're using the child catheter, the, the most important thing is uh, engage the uh, mother catheter in the coronary ostium. When using the, even though the Amplus catheter, first your Amplus catheter didn't fit the, this is deeply engaged. It, it, it means the backup support is still weak. But uh, using the child catheter and you push the, maybe you push the uh, guiding catheter deeply, so the guiding catheter backup is okay. True. But the first, you are, even though changing, after changing the Amplus catheter, your guiding catheter backup support is still weak. Right. So the most important thing is the guiding catheter backup. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. engage the coaxial and the deeply engage is the yes. important thing, I think. Yeah. Yes. Once I put guide liner on JR4, I amplized mm -hmm. right coronary catheter. Mm -hmm. With the guide liner support, mm -hmm. it could not go. The session is still well taken. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for your Thank you. Okay, I'd like to invite the uh, final speaker of this session, uh, Dr. Sisa Me, sorry, <laughs> who is from the Kirpin. Sisa Me, or Eskana Birigan. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Tessa May Ravenna Ekarma Villarreal from the Philippine Heart Center, a cardiology fellow in training. I will be presenting our paper entitled Chronic Total Occlusion with instant restenosis and graft occlusion after coronary artery bypass grafting in a 52-year-old Filipino male, a successful management. I would like to acknowledge the operators of this case are my consultants, Dr. Theo J. Santi and Dr. Ronaldo H. Estacio. I have no disclosure nor any conflict of interest. We are presented with a 52-year-old Filipino male, known hypertensive, non-diabetic, and a previous smoker. He had acute coronary syndrome, ST elevation, myocardial infarction in 2009, and subsequently underwent percutaneous coronary intervention of the proximal LAD and proximal LCX. He was discharged, improved, and he was compliant to all his medications. However, five years after PCI, that was in 2014, there was note of recurrence of chest pain and worsening dyspnea. A repeat coronary angiogram showed instant restenosis in the LAD and chronic total occlusion of the right coronary artery. During that time, intravascular ultrasound was done, which showed type 4 instant restenosis. Unfortunately, we could no longer retrieve the clips. Patient underwent coronary artery bypass grafting with two vessel grafts, left internal mammary artery to left anterior descending artery, and saphenous vein graft to right posterior descending artery. Seven years after cabbage, however, last 2000, 2021, there was recurrence of heart failure symptoms, thus the admission. For the relevant test results prior to catheterization, his 12 bit ECG showed atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response with normal axis and old inferior wall MI. 
to the echocardiography with Doppler showed concentric left ventricular hypertrophy with hypokinesia of the lateral and inferior left ventricular free wall with a preserved ejection fraction of 53%. There was normal right ventricular dimension and wall motion. Repeat coronary angiogram showed the left main to have luminal irregularities trifurcating into the LAD, ramus intermedius, and LCX. The LAD has 95% osteoproximal segment stenosis with total occlusion of the proximal segment of the previously de deployed stent with the distal segments visualized via intracoronary and intercoronary collaterals. The previous IVUS clips in 2014 could not be retrieved, but a type 4 ISR was noted in the patient's records. The LCX is a good-sized non-dominant vessel with patent stents with 30 to 40% distal segment stenosis. The left internal mammary artery to the LAD graft is patent up to the mid-segment only. The SVG to RPDA graft was not selectively cannulated. The RCA was noted to be a good-sized dominant vessel with, totally occluded, with total occlusion at the proximal segment. The rest of the vessel is seen via intracoronary collaterals. The right posterior descending artery is a good-sized vessel which appears diffusely diseased and underfilled and is seen via intracoronary collaterals. The patient underwent PCI of the LAD and the RCA. Dual injection was performed at the start of the procedure to visualize the distal vessel. Anti-grade wire escalation technique was used to cross the CTO lesion. Because of cost issues, IVUS was no longer repeated since it was already done in 2014 and the mechanism of the instant resinosis was noted to be neoatherosclerosis with calcifications. Rotational atherectomy was done in the osteoproximal to mid-LAD segment prior to predilatation of the LAD. Predilatation was done with a 1.5 by 15 mm followed by 2 by 20 mm balloon. A total of three stents were deployed in the LAD. A 3 by 32 mm stent in the mid to distal LAD, followed by a 3.5 by 38 mm stent in the mid LAD, and a 4 by 38 mm stent in the osteoproximal to mid LAD. Post dilatation was done with a 3.25 by 20 mm balloon in the mid to distal LAD, 3.5 by 20 mm in the proximal to mid LAD, and a 4 by 20 mm balloon in the proximal LAD. Post stand shot so showed no residual stenosis with TME3 flow. For the RCA, anti-grade wire escalation technique was used to cross the CTO lesion. Predilatation was done by 2.5 by 20 mm balloon. Two stents were deployed in the RCA, a 4 by 28 mm stent in the mid RCA, and a 5 by 30 mm stent in the proximal to mid RCA. Post dilatation was done with a 4.5 by 15 mm balloon. Post stent shot showed no residual stenosis with TME3 flow. In patients with type 4 instant restenosis and multivessel disease, such as in this patient, cabbage was initially the preferred approach over a repeat PCI with additional drug eluting stent. Our rotational atherectomy may be advantageous in cases with calcified neoatherosclerosis, such as in our patient. And based on the 2021 ACCHA coronary vascularization guidelines, of the different stent types, Everolimus eluting stents appeared to have the best efficacy. So, for our conclusion, a repeat revascularization following instant re restenosis remains to be a complex procedure, thus early detection and timely intervention are important. Coronary angiogram identifies instant restenosis, but ideally IVO should be done to elucidate the mechanism and guide stent implantation. In patients with diffuse ISR in large vessels or a CTO with multivessel disease, cabbage is the preferred approach. However, in this case, wherein there was graft occlusion post-cabbage, ISR persistence, and CTO of the native vessels, rotational atherectomy, repeat PCI with a drug eluting stent were key to the successful revascularization, prevention of mortality, and overall improved functional capacity. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much for excellent cases. Any question or comment? So one question. You didn't demonstrate that the venous graft to the right coronary artery is occluded. So did you do an aortogram or did you do a CT angiogram? Because you were not able to demonstrate the, what uh, what has happened to the venous graft to the right coronary artery. Was it patent? It, did it you know? was not selectively cannulated. We could not find the graft, the SVG to the RPDA graft. Sometimes you may not find it in the, with the catheter cannulation, but you must make sure that it's occluded. Okay, thank you. Ideally, an iotogram or a CT angiogram, you must make sure that graft is not 
patent. Thank you, just, sir. Just a suggestion. Uh -huh. Thank you, doctor. Didn't you check the CT in this case? We weren't able to do the CT in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So did you check the IBUS before rotor hysterectomy? Unfortunately, we could no longer retrieve the IVUS clips in 2014. Oh. And because of cost issues, we had to choose between repeating the oh. IVUS or going oh. directly to rotational oh. atherectomy. Oh. Thus, we proceeded with the latter. Oh. So you decide uh, using the rotational atherectomy, uh, what about? Baron indentation or you, you tried the baron dilation first? Balloon dilatation. Uh, but if we... So the balloon dilation, you, you cannot dilate the lesion. So you uh, apply the rotation selectomy in this case. Yes, 1.5 oh. bur. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. Okay, please. See, if I gather correctly, very well presented case, obviously, you could not cross, you could not do intervention of LAD in the first attempt before CAVG. Is it so? You said that's why patient went bypass surgery. Yes. Then how could you cross so easily after a couple of years of bypass surgery, slightly mm -hmm. I'm just concerned. Can you explain that? So, sorry, um, I would like to clarify, doctor, that during, in 2014, mm. uh, the patient proceeded to cabbage. The decision of the heart team and the patient was to proceed to cabbage. It, they did not try to do PCI of the LAD. I got for it the wrong. Clarification. Probably sorry. gathered wrong. My apologies. The second thing, as uh, Dr. Gohl has commented, uh, if RC was filling integratedly, it is very high possibility that RCA graft is occluded. No doubt, your point is well taken. Thank you so much, Doctor. I think why right, uh, the graft might, 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 uh, must be occluded because we don't see any venous count to after the final right coronary angiogram. If the, the graft is patent uh, by a uh, 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 cancer injection from a guiding cancer after revascularization or right coronary artery CTO, if the graft is patent, we will see the retrograde flow into the vein graft back to aorta. Yeah, that's what we, what we often sing in. Uh, I think uh, you did rota uh, through, uh, inside the stent. <laughs> yes, yes, doctor. Yeah. So that is a point. I think uh, doing rota inside a stent is always not a good idea. Uh, mm. There are problems. Uh, I want mm. to know uh, the panel or chairperson's oh. view, point of view. Uh, to my mind, if there is such situation, we can uh, cross the lien with a small balloon, use, mm. try to use IVL, mm. or uh, if we have laser, mm. uh, we can use laser. Mm. But I will keep rota as a last option. For mm. <laughs> but uh, I, IVL is not common. <laughs> and IVL yeah. balloon may not cross. Uh, if yeah. you yeah. fail to yeah. cross. Sometimes yeah. it does not cross, then yeah. we can make it cross yeah. by yeah. Uh, using like nano balloon, one yeah. millimeter crossing oh. it, then the, uh, mm. uh, dilating with the uh, NC, uh, mm. the, the yeah. OPN balloons also. Mm -hmm. We have used that. Uh, mm. we, we have made uncrossable lions cross and then mm. used the IVL. I, I, oh. Many patients, many of them. Mm. In continuation okay. with this comment, rota and stunt, that is freshly deployed stunt, something like that. Once patient has CTO after so many years of stunt deployment, Mm. Rota is not contraindicated. Mm. It's can, not contraindicated, it can be but the done. complication rate is more. Uh, you see the debris going yeah, down. Yeah. And That's why he was telling that, did you try something else before doing Rota? Yeah, but, uh, I, I, I think the IBUS is, uh, gave me, us the good information mm. whether the Rota is indicated yes. or not. Yes. In 2014, yeah. sir, it was already noted that the, yeah. there was calcifications, yeah. neuroatherosclerosis, yeah. Oh, okay. so... But the, that sometimes was... the stent is underexpanded or the stent is uh, also the... Uh, uh, the issue of stent uh, failure. Mm. Yes, one so of the, the mechanisms of instant yeah. restenosis. So the, the... In, in such case, before rota, I think I recommend the uh, IBUS. Yes, if ideally, possible. yes, yeah, if after. Feasible. I was maybe, yeah. should be done before the yeah. load operation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finally, yeah. Edwin, what will be the long-term outcome? We don't know with such a long mm. stent, instant restenosis, again, multiple stents, but of course, there is no option in this patient. But I think it's it's quite a well-done case. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, doctors. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very so, much. Thank you very much for uh, joining our session and the panelists and the speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you.